This is Jeremiah. Welcome back. We are going to take a dive in Corinthians again. We're focusing on Corinthians for a while. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given amongst men. We do everything in that name, and it's the only name given. Let's go. Jeremiah, this is New Covenant, and you're ready to go, huh? You, you, you've got your scriptures up, and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a look at some concepts today. Now, I don't do this very much, and I will stop doing this unless we go to 57 in this ministry, um, which I'll probably have 57A, 57B, or something, uh, where we have the April Matrix. The April Matrix is the key lesson that I have available here whereby you can take a look at Christianity from uh, from very comprehensive view. So, and I'm very happy with that. It kind of came spontaneous. Uh, obviously, the Lord helped me work on this. It's His work. It's His word. It's uh, I didn't write the Bible, so I'm just enjoying it with you, Jeremiah. We lift up our hands unto thy name. God inhabits the praises of his people. Let's praise him. Praise you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We bless the Lord and all that is within us, and we forget none of his benefits. He does not reward you according to your sins, your iniquity, and happy is the man, blessed is the man. Whose sin, who God does not impute iniquity, He does not place your errors on you. Dinah, just as if you never sinned. And we praise Him for that constantly. And the Lord is worthy to be praised. We just constantly uh, praise Him for with that mercy given to us, and we do it constantly here. And we also look to be with the, in, in the presence, even if, even in his presence at, at his coming, his second coming. Evidently, Revelation 19, we're on some sort of white horses, and uh, it, it sounds awfully nice. It sounds awfully exciting. Uh, it, the wonderful Revelation 19, which is good stuff, you know, uh, this ministry focuses on the good stuff most of the time here. We, we, I, I have a lot of videos available for, you know, talking about uh, the Koran or something or, you know, demonic witnesses. and All this stuff is very negative. It, it's sickening. Uh, but, but it's part of Bible study. But for the most part with me, it's kind of sickening. I, I really don't want to talk about the beast or something ugly, something stinky. You know, I, I really don't want to do it that much. It, it's, it's, uh, we're all basically reluctant. That's why Paul said we groan. You know, we hold our nose around here. I just saw a politician uh, on, the, on, the, on the web last night. He, he, somebody, somebody said they caught him doing something or something. Uh, and he said, do you have any evidence? In other words, he's laughing at us. Some of these politicians, these evil people, movie star, the people, you, they, they, you know, you really don't want to see them like, it's kind of like you want to watch the news and get the weather, and then they poke, and they poke these people in your face, you know, these wicked people. They're obviously wicked, I mean. And, and when, when, I don't mention names here and stuff too much. I'm not, I don't want to get into names, you know. I don't. Uh, we have no personal vendetta. We, Jude says we have no railing accusation. We don't cuss people out here, you know. Uh, we're, we're too busy thinking about being in heaven in glory and peace and love. So why would we want to get into all that too much? I don't, I'm going to have to get into it a little later. I have some videos up available on my old channel. Uh, this is a new channel. Everything is revised, cleaned up, cleared up. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, condensed. And we're going to get into uh, Corinthians where, where I'm going to take a peek at a few concepts that Paul talks about. As we, as we get ready for law and grace, and this is going to be part of my, um, a component of my new lesson on law and grace. Now, law and grace will probably fall under number two in this ministry, which is called sound doctrine. Or, or I'll probably give it a separate category, like 56A or something, okay? Um, 
as we add, we I don't want to add too many more uh, playlists to this ministry. I don't want to add too many more videos. Period. So um, we're, we're really into heavy precision right now, where everything is precise. Now it's impossible to be precise about everything in the Bible, and and uh, and many of you know that because there's just too much good stuff. There, there's too many. There's too much intellectualism. You know, there, there are too many points of intellect to to pinpoint everything. You know, I'm, I'm not attempting to do that. What I'm going to do for you, for those of you who follow along, um, I'm going to probably focus on the what, what we might call Micah six eight. You know, what, what we might call living bread. Which are, what is what. What when does the master say this is required of you? Okay, that's what I'm going to do here. And um, sometimes it's called sound doctrine, which is basically the same thing. However, sound doctrine can be awfully broad. Um, Paul said, "Don't have long hair for men." I have a movie that that it has Paul in the movie, or depicted in the movie, and he has really long hair. Paul specifically said, men should not have long hair. So the people who made the movie, did they know that Paul said? Well, I don't know, but, you know, uh, um, that's considered sound doctrine. But might you call that living bread? No, Paul said we have no such rules. So, so it, it's the correct thing to do, but it, it doesn't mean that you're toast if you don't do it, you know, you know if you don't obey the the ordinance. That's the point. And then it becomes a situation where it, should we prioritize this? Should we prioritize that? And, and uh, we only have so much time left, left to teach. What should we teach? It's impossible to teach everything. The Bible is too big. The Bible is too rich and too big. It's like going to a smorgasbord or, or a gourmet dinner or something and there's too much food. You can't eat it all at one time. You, you, you have to select things and that's it. You know, the banquet only has one stomach. So, so we're, we're here to, to really focus, and that's why I have these 52 plus categories here, because I'm hitting most of the home run hitters for you. And, uh, and, and, and let me share something else. You know, we're, we're going to start listening to basically uh, the entire New Testament, uh, Book of Isaiah, Psalms, etc., and probably Proverbs too. I haven't decided, but we're going to listen to all these books uh, over and over again. Then we're going to start supplementing it with books like Jeremiah or Ezekiel or something. So, uh, but those will be basically supplemental books. Job, they're, to me, they're supplemental. Now, maybe Genesis might be required kind of here, um, but I'm going to select chapters that I think are uh, germane to what's required. So, uh, and that's not going to be easy because it's uh, all of it's good. So, uh, however, we will repeat things like this Corinthians uh, letter here, both of these letters, Corinthians 1 and 2, we, we will repeat them five times a year. You know, if the Lord doesn't come back within a year in the rapture, because I anticipate being accounted worthy to escape all seven years of what's getting ready to happen, I hope to. We, we pray constantly that we are accounted worthy to be five of the ten that are poofed out of here. We just looked at that in Corinthians like once again. Corinthians is ginormous. It's, it's got rapture in it. It's got, my, geez, uh, those two letters, Corinthians 1 and 2. Uh, in many ways, it's the heartbeat of your Bible. Just no, there's no question about it. You know, the, uh, those two books are just, they're too long and too informative. Um, you know, they're, they're like the body of the letter. And so, um, Let's let's get going as we just rejoice together with you in having Bible study again. It's another day. Uh, many of you know uh, this ministry. We 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 get into the Bible almost every morning. Uh, there, what else is there to do? I don't know of anything else to do. So, uh, for me, and we have, um, as I just stated, we have those uh, germane, you know, main text that we're going to use here, and, and I think that it is very beneficial for us to focus on the book, the book we're in right now, and 
And the next step is law and grace. Now, I'm, I, like I said, I'll probably make law and grace 56A or something. I haven't decided. But law and grace will probably have its own lesson, which is where Paul starts talking about the Old Testament compared to the New Testament. And, and uh, what's the difference and what's, you know, what's the same? You know, compare and contrast. So there's a lot of work there. And I, I, I have a lesson on that. Um, but I, I put it away because I, I'm going to I'm going to recalibrate. You know, I'm going to have to go through it all over again, and um, you know, it's going to be a labor of love. It's going to be denial. It's going to um, uh, denial is not just a, a river in Egypt, as they say. But uh, we we have a lot of work here, and uh, there's denial involved. There's sacrifice, and it's a sacrifice of praise. So that's what we do here. And, uh, and uh, it's easy to sacrifice when you love the person you're sacrificing for. You know, love. Somebody told me years ago, love doesn't pay the bills. That's the that's the, that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. That's exactly what pays the bills. <laughs> that's that's exactly what cooks the food. You know, that's exactly what does everything in the church. And, and the people who are saying that are Babylonians. And that's a sad thing about being surrounded by people who are confused, those who enjoy bitterness and enigmas, you know, and um, uh, we're here to help people to get them out of enigmas, you know, the, those captives, set those captives free, you know, and I've got that river of life where I can set these psychologically psychotic people free. I just went to some psychology lesson work uh, I already gave a lesson on psychology here and why it's bad news. It's available up there for you now. Uh, I put that in the 50s somewhere. I forgot that 54 or something, but anyway. Um, and that, that's my Babylon lesson. I might have put it under 32. 30 is everything that's wrong, you know, and uh, hamartia. It's where people miss the mark. It's, it's where people are in the dark. It's where people are deceived it's, it's where people are condemned and so forth so uh, that's a big category uh, I, I break the category down in 53a I gave you um, uh, 30 means the dirty you know the, the filth the trash the lies that's what 30 stands for however I put 53a or so um, with the Quran which is just unbelievably unbelievable garbage that that, that book is, is just it, it, it is just uh, profusely um, uh, horrible. It's, yeah. Uh, but anyway, let, let's let that go for now. Now, Jeremiah, you're on fire We're in Corinthians. That's correct. A lot of Corinthians right now, uh, I'll probably take a break on Corinthians and the book of Acts because I have both of those books waiting for me here. I'm going to have to bounce around a little bit because I'm going slower than I planned because I really want to get into reading. And what we'll probably do is read a couple of chapters and then I will uh, later on uh, today for me. And uh, let, let's look at uh, um, Law and Grace. I'm going to give you a peek into Law and Grace. Paul's going to mention it, and I'm not going to look at him too much right now. What I want to look at are the concepts, okay? We're going to do some vocabulary contextualization right now. What, what, what are these concepts of Law and Grace? I'm going to talk about it for a couple of minutes and I'm going to move on. And... Uh, Uh, as Paul does over and over again, and, so, and, and most of your, a lot, a lot of your Bible writers, they declare themselves as servants, and that they are going to serve, and they're going to be uh, saints. They're, they're, they're called to be saints. And saint means holy ones. So in, in, in Protestantism, everybody who's a Christian is a saint. America has been inundated with Catholicism and a bunch of garbage. It's, it's very unfortunate, but uh, it, it happens. And uh, in other words, people who are confused are talking to you. Uh, I, I have lots of classic movies, a lot of war movies that I really enjoy, but, but, but what is really sickening is when they keep inserting acute mental retardation biblically in my face. And uh, um, I'm very tolerant, but the point is, is that... Uh, I can see the devil trying to creep his, 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 his ugly self into the doorway, you know, and the thing is, is that he does it in these movies, you know, where they're, they're, they're wandering along, all of a sudden, 
some guy kneeled before another man. You know, I have a very good docudrama on Cortez, Hernan Cortez and his lady friend, the the Indian woman, and so forth, and uh, and uh, about 1500 so. He goes to Cuba, then he goes to the Yucatan Peninsula there, and uh, and uh, one of the, one of the guys kneels down before a priest, you know, and it's it's about one of the most sickeningest things I've ever seen. It, it's we Protestants, you know, we, we as my buddy used to say, we don't play, you know, and and, uh, and these people who, who who come on like they're normal and so forth, and in many ways they are normal. Some of these actors, some of these people. They're, 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 they're what you might call decent people, but however, they're, they're, they're delving into a realm that they don't know that is poison. You know, that goes for these screenwriters, that goes for these actors. I had one movie I kind of liked a little bit about two people who were engaged who broke their engagement. You know, oh, we fell in love or something, whatever. And, uh, and the movie was done fairly well, you know. Um, the pretense of the movie ruins the movie because they were engaged. Okay, why don't you stick to your commitment? You know, and, and they were being very frivolous about it. And, and uh, to me, it's a little distasteful. I know it happens, and, and we're not going to freak out behind it. You know, we're, we're not going to condemn the people. It's just that it's it's distasteful. Let's put it that way. But uh, you know, they kneel down before uh, Mary and so forth, and and uh, and. and what it is is just it's just an infection and it's it's really horrible it's not any it's not a light issue you know it's not something that is you know the actors should have never uh, if they're protestants you know um the original 13 colonies here are quite was it 13 i forgot how many was it 18 1760 i think there were 13 but uh and uh there was only one state that wouldn't allow slavery. That was Georgia, which was founded by a rich guy or some sort. I forgot what Georgia, but uh, um, King George threatened the 13 colonies with an invasion of Catholicism, which was the Qu Quebec doctrine or something, right? He was going to push Catholicism on us here and stuff, you know. And Catholicism was very weak in the, mid in the Midwest because the French were all the way down to... Mississippi River to New Orleans and so forth, up from Canada. And unfortunately, Catholicism was very popular um, amongst the French and so forth. And, uh, but the 13 colonies were not really involved, and they, they didn't want Catholicism. And they were uh, William Penn followers, and they were enlightened, you know, that uh, on many biblical accounts, you know, that that they basically viewed Catholicism as garbage because that's exactly what it is. And what, what the point is, is that uh, they were tolerant of, of it because uh, Washington, D.C. was purchased, the White House was purchased from a Catholic fella and so forth. So that Catholicism has always been sprinkled in the American fabric, but the more popular it gets, the sicker the place goes, and that's very unfortunate. A lot of Latin countries have adopted Catholicism, and, and it's just horrible. It's just been one big disaster for South America and so forth, Central. It's just been an absolute disaster. Uh, because when you disobey the Ten Commandments, it can't, it, it's not going to go good for you. I, I don't care who you are, I don't care how nice you are. And, uh, and unfortunately, the fabric of America was infected, and the movies too. So, and it just ruins movies. It, it, you know, um, where, where in, in the politician, the I'm sorry, not the politician, the movie stars, whatever they call themselves, you know, the, the actors is probably a better word. I mean, uh, there's only one star. That's Jesus, the morning star. But uh, you know, they, they, these people, they're they're uh, they're pretending to be somebody they're not, of course. But the thing is, is that they, uh, you know, you. you if, if you're if you're a Protestant, you know, and, and, and the, you get a script that tells you to kneel down and worship a woman flying across the room, you know, and, and praise her or something like that, and, and, and you and you take the script, you you've just demonstrated that you your soul your soul is in dire trouble, and, and we hope that we hope that these actors are saved or something that they went back to being Protestants or something. Um, 
That's not my point. But you're entering into a realm that you should have never, especially you who are enlightened. That's the point. Americans are supposed to be enlightened. You're supposed to be intelligent and you're supposed to be wise. And hopefully, you know, the breadbasket of America is generally wise. And that's why George threatened the colonists with some sort of Catholic invasion of some sort. I forgot what the doctrine was, but they knew how to get our attention here. You know, we Quakers, you know, they knew that we knew that it was bad news. You know, that this whole Mary, scrape your knees on the ground, asinine behavior, you know, mental retardation on steroids, you know. And this is what separates us Protestants from the world, is that we are hated by the world because they love lies. And so we don't love lies, we don't embrace lies. So we're hated by the world. John said, don't be surprised if the world hates you. So we're not surprised that the world hates us. If somebody over there likes a lie and you teach the truth, they're not going to like you. Because they know who you represent, Jesus Christ and the truth. And they love murder, they love lies, they love stealing, and they love doing wicked things. And then you come along and you go, I don't, I don't want to worship a woman flying across the room. and I don't want to scrape my knees on the ground to be saved. I don't, when you get that asinine behavior out of my face, and, they, and, they, and they're like, oh, we, this is the way we roll, you know. This is our Council of Trent, you know. They had that couple of famous meetings in, in, in Europe, you know, years ago, you know, 1500, 1600, whatever year that was, they had the, the Council of Trent, where all the Catholics got together and said, let's organize ourselves, you know, and, and let's get our doctrine together, you know, you know, uh, uh, let's, let's become more popular, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the Reformation and all this, you know. All they're doing is reforming garbage, a Reformation. You know, the point is, is that uh, you, you can't squeeze things past a Protestant. It's, it's not going to work. And if, if what you're doing is sickening, they're going to tell you it's sickening, and they're going to ask you to leave. That's the way it goes. And that goes into all branches of life. Uh, in, in America, for example, they used to have the um, people sneaking around. The, uh, and, and everybody who's not a Protestant is basically... Uh, under the control of the devil. That's the whole point. In some form or fashion or other, they're doing something perverted, no matter who they are. They're doing something wicked, and, and they're doing something evil. You know, you, it, it doesn't matter. They, they used to have some black Muslims walking around our neighborhood, and they, they were well-dressed people, and they shaved their hair off. You know, they were bald-headed, and they, you know, they had bow ties on, and they, and they, they, they took very good care of themselves. They spent money on clothing, this organization, big time, and getting, you know, getting their teeth clean and all of this. And uh, but they would walk around and pass out this magazine of theirs, you know, that had their doctrine in it, the Black Muslimhood and all this. And, uh, and and in the and in the paper it said that white people are animals, that they, that they came from caves, and that white people are animals. That's what basically one of their beliefs. And the white people are inherently evil and all of this kind of stuff. And so what they would do is they would come over to like our house or other people who were white and they'd try to sell the magazine to them and, you know, and sell pies, you know, bean pies. As if I want a pie made out of beans. I don't want a pie made out of beans. Uh, that, that sounds awfully gross. And I tasted it, I didn't like it. But they, they try to push those bean pies on you, you know. You want a bean pie, bro? You know, I don't want a bean pie, dude. Get lost. You know, uh, get out of here. White people are not animals in caves in Europe, and you, you basically, you know, you're thinking to yourself, you're an idiot. Get lost. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to. I don't think you're cool. You know, I, I, you know, you know, uh, you, they're kind of like infiltrating. You know, they'll, they'll even sell their, their magazine to white people and stuff. You know, they, you know, they walk up to white people and smile at them. You know, hi there, Cindy. You know, whatever. You know, they because they have to be known in a, in a small town. You know. I, was, I lived in a relatively small town, relatively, 
in Orange County, but, uh, you know, people want to come up to you as, as though you're dumb dumb, you know, and, and uh, it's very unfortunate that people will tolerate, you know, as Paul said in the book of Galatians chapter, what was that, one, he said, I wouldn't have tolerated these people for five seconds. See, see you're, not, you're not supposed to tolerate people who are evil and liars in your face. You're supposed to ask them to leave or you're going to leave. You know, if they're presenting something to you, uh, John said, don't even, don't even wish them Godspeed, you know, basically talk to them at all. When they come to your door, talking to the women in John, uh, 2 John, he told the women and everybody else who's listening, if, if, if these devils come to your door, don't wish them Godspeed, just slam the door in their face. Shut the door. These people are from hell. And the thing is, is that, you know, you, you, you have to be careful that you're not mean to people, per se. But the bottom line is, is that if someone's coming to get you, you need to tell them they can't get you and split. You know, it's, it's like entertaining, you know, uh, a shark, you know, in the, in, the, in the ocean. That's your fault. You know, don't entertain the shark. <laughs> I mean, so... Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to fall for any of this. Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, when you when you love Jesus Christ, and we're here to love the Lord with all of our heart, and and to study and to be attentive and listening to instructions, as Solomon says, then you, you, you should be okay. So when these evil entities come your way, you go snap, crack, and pop, get lost. I, I know. I don't want it. You know, a lot of these people are snatching souls and, and they're condemning people and they're recruiting hell. That's what they're doing. As the master said, they go out and make a proselyte twice the son of hell as themselves. And that's recruitment. Now, fortunately, for, fortunately for me, I had Quaker parents, more or less. And, uh, and, and I was warned and instructed. And, and when I ran into uh, confusion, I was able to discern it, and I was circumspect and, and um, sharper than any two-edged sword to discern the thoughts and intentions of people who, hang, who want to hang around. And when you start compromising, all of a sudden you'll find yourself getting burned by people that you didn't have to get burned by. You know, if you focus on the Church of Jesus Christ and you're a Protestant Christian person, and you focus on the church, and that's what you focus on, you're going to find yourself not getting burned that much at all in life because God wants you to use your head. When you start hanging around people who are questionable, who don't, who don't really tell you that, that, they, that, that they study the Ten Commandments, I mean, uh, you know, then you, you need to split. You know, people who don't have rules and, and don't have the, the Christ law of love and, and forgiveness and mercy and kindness and and people don't have this as a as a as a goal of theirs you, you, you need to let them go you leave them alone some people don't even ask people questions you know you get engaged with someone you get be married or something and you you don't even ask them do they believe in murder is okay or, you know or, you know they, you know especially if they don't go to church and so forth how do you know that they, they might not hurt you see they, you, you don't know that you have to ask questions. You, you have to use your head. You know. One of the best things you can do when you meet people, some of you young people out there, is to screen them. You know, you, you're not out to look for perfect people. That's not the point. The point is that you, you need to screen people. You know, you, you know, have you heard of the Ten Commandments? I've never heard of it before. Thou shalt not steal. It's funny you would mention that. I, I, I want to go steal tomorrow. You, 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 have to, you, have to, you have to use your head. You, you, know, you, have, to, you have to be inquisitive at, 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 often in your life. You, know, you have to ask questions. You, you need to think and concentrate. And one of the best things to use, of course, is your, your Bible here. You, if you start asking some biblical questions, you know, are you a Christian? Or, uh, have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Uh, do you think thou shalt not steal is good? You, you know, um, um, I believe thou shalt not steal. And if they're thieves, you can look in their face and pretty much tell 
And they don't like what you just said, so that means you leave them alone. Okay, it's very simple. I've had people call me recently, they tell me they don't know what they're doing. You know, they tell I don't know what I'm doing. I said, well, listen, you called the wrong place to tell me you don't know what you're doing. The first thing you should have told me was that you want to share God's love or something. You know, you know, you, you, uh, I, don't, I don't talk to vegetables, you know. We, we love vegetables, but I don't really talk to you. I don't talk to people who don't know what they're doing, you know. You, you know you're supposed to know that you're out to love mankind through Jesus Christ. Okay, you should know that and you should articulate that. You know, if you don't articulate that, then we really don't need you. You know, because, you know, you haven't made a commitment to do the right thing and you've been exposed to it for, you know, I don't know how many years. If you talk to somebody that's 50 years old, 60 years old, and they live in the United, the United States, and they talk to you and they don't tell you that their goal is to, to love people and, and to spread the gospel and truth, then you need to probably leave them alone. That's the point. Because they've had ample opportunity with no excuse to, to focus on talking, I'm out to love, love my neighbor. So you're, you're dealing with someone who's acutely mentally retarded and, and it might be a good idea for them to leave, leave them alone. That even goes for your young people. You know, out uh, there. Blessed is the man who sits not on scoffers. Psalm number one. You know, people who people who people who don't focus on on, on righteousness and teaching righteousness and and uh, and agape love of forgiveness and and mercy to people and kindness and denial for the benefit of others and and you just dump them and you, you know if, if they don't seem that like that, that they're going in that direction you, you you need to pray and think some of you young people out there one of the best decisions i ever made in my life was to leave town like abraham and start all over again i did exactly what abraham did i'll be right back maranatha